get this started. Hello, everybody. Once again, thought I'd just start this out with sort of where I left off on the last stream for the most part. Um, interestingly, I came back to this uh, setting up this stream and it didn't quite sound the same as it did last time, which is always a funny thing about uh, modular. Something didn't save or somebody moved a knob, probably one of my cats or something like that. Anyway, it still sounds pretty good. So, uh, today I thought we would do two things. One, uh, I promised last time that we would talk about how to tune rings here. Uh, oh, hi. Hi, Gijora. <laughs> I recognize you from YouTube, I think. It's good to see you. Uh, yeah, so I thought we'd talk about tuning rings because it's a pain in the ass, and I found a really good resource for doing it, although I have not actually tried it yet. But it's from Lightbath on YouTube. He's amazing at everything else. I assume that he's good at this. So we'll give that a shot. And then I've got Morphogene running up here, uh, finally powered and all that. Uh, and I loaded an interesting sounding reel into it. So uh, we'll play around that with that, and it will be uh, practically like an unboxing, because I have not touched Morphogene in a very long time, so I remember some of the things that it does, but not all of them. Um, but yeah, so let's start with uh, with rings. Let me just change this so we can see better. Uh, and actually, what I have is the source for this. So let me just mute this in. Uh, so, I'm gonna figured out how to do these browser things. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I seem to have a lot of EU viewers, which is, uh, which is funny. <laughs> Saturdays. Saturdays are the good ones, uh, hopefully, for those of you in the EU. And hi, Ken. Good to see you again. Um, Saturdays, 10 a.m. That's when I try to do my EU streams, so. But yeah, so rings. Uh, and Lightbath. If you haven't seen Lightbath on YouTube, uh, you should definitely check him out. He does some really awesome ambient stuff. Uh, he was sort of an inspiration for me to get into the Eurorack side of things. But he has this little Patreon page, and he has this document that he was kind enough to make public about how you tune rings. So, um, find my mouse cursor. Here we go. Let's have a look see and give it a shot. So, let's see. So, preparing the module, the first thing we need to do is brightness at 10 o'clock. Uh, I, I won't uh, leave this up. I'll let you see uh, what's going on. I need to make a split screen of this with a browser at some point, but I haven't done it yet. So, uh, there we go. So, first instruction is uh, all connections unpatched except for output. So, we can do that. I'm not sure whether this is going to be, it might actually be able to be tuned um, using Ornament and Crime. So let's, I'll just show you that. So Ornament and Crime here, I'm actually running uh, a custom firmware on Ornament and Crime, not just the default one. It's called Hemispheres and it takes Ornament and Crime and basically splits it in half. So that there's two different applets that you can run, one on each side of Ornament and Crime. Um, and those applets do a whole ton of stuff from like, you know, envelope generators to a tuner, which we'll use to quantizers to uh, mini trigger sequencers to um, there's actually a lo-fi recorder somehow in there. It makes like the crunchiest noises because ornament and crime is not meant for processing audio uh, signals. But yeah, anyway, there's lots of cool stuff in it, but we're just going to use uh, the tuner, 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 tuner. Here we go. Um, something I have to do yeah you double tap and it shows you where things are supposed to be plugged in so digital input 2 is where this goes into so we'll tell I tune this rings first but yeah so hopefully we can just barely see which I could zoom in a little more but my uh, my camera starts going in my face and you can't see anything anymore <laughs> Uh, but it says a A4 is at 440 hertz, and currently the signal that's getting out of there is 
a sharp fifth, but that's probably just because there's absolutely no sound coming out of it. The other thing I'm going to do is just hook up uh, a Tetra Pad trigger. I'll need a longer cable for that, but just something so we can actually play this because uh, rings, unlike a lot of other VCOs, you know, rings is a resonator, so it doesn't actually do anything on its own unless you strum the resonator or shoot some sound into it. In this case, we'll just strum the resonator. So right now, um, hmm, right now, we're not getting it coming through into the tuner. Is it supposed to be in the CV? No, I'm 98% certain it's supposed to be in here. You're triggering it. So, all right, well, let's set it up and see. Heinbach also has a channel to check out on YouTube someday. I mean, a more old tape mixture with URX stuff. I've heard his name around, but admittedly, I've never actually checked him out. Um, so I will have to do that. Uh, and I see him on Twitter and stuff like that all the time too. So so trigger four, yeah, which is what this is in. It's always hard to tell that when you've got these like miniature modules, like I have this problem with, with microburst all the time that it's so small and the light control layout isn't the same way so that you see like lights or like put it in trigger four and it's like, well, they're not labeled anymore because it's so small. I assume trigger four is all the way over on this side. It should be. All right, so the next step is that brightness is supposed to be at around 10 o'clock. So let's do an all for the moment so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, brightness at like approximately 10. I think I know what this is, and this is probably supposed to be in the green mode. Yeah, I think I've heard, I think I've even heard this happen before when I've just been working with rings that there's a sweet spot with brightness where. And I think shape too, yeah. No, structure. It's just, uh, well, shape, structure, yeah. Brightness at 10 o'clock. Position has to not be at min or max, so somewhere in here. And then shape is at around 10 o'clock, and that produces a pretty pure tone, as I recall. So, strumming from here, the odd, whatever is going out. Um, all right, so then course tune, it says, to course tune it, dampening to maximum. Now patch a dummy cable into strum and pull out the strum dummy to trigger a long note. Well, we can just trigger it from the tetra pad. That's fine. <laughs> uh, and then tune the frequency attenuator. Ah, yes. Then you turn the frequency to get close. Right. So ah, now we're getting somewhere. So. We're getting A sharp one right now, so let's just see if I can get close to C. Oh, oh, so sensitive because these are such tiny knobs. No, come on. Okay, close enough. C to minus thirty-seven cents, and now you can use the little ten inverter to uh, to adjust a little bit more. So, oh. Zero. Whoa, what? Come on. E2. Something is not happening right here. C2. I still don't think I have it quite in the right position. I'm going to listen to this. It might make it a little easier to see, uh, to hear if it's. Uh, we don't have any reverb, so that's good. Turn the damping down just so that we get a shorter note. Not that far down. Maybe a little bit. That sounds pretty pure. Okay. Let's see where we go with this. Yeah, okay, now I'm getting pretty consistently C0. Or, oop, I was. Now I'm getting C2 again. <laughs> like I said, this module is very difficult at the best of times to really tune properly. Oh, oh my god, I had it for a second there. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, and now the uh, attenuator is like not quite responding. Hmm. This might even be too uh, too sensitive a uh, 
tuner for this. What else do I have that has a tuner? Do I have anything else that has a tuner? Uh, I can put out a reference pitch from uh, Distinct Mark IV. That might help. Because this, so far, even moving the attenuator, inverter not have an effect, which is strange to say the least. Certainly should be. Okay. Uh, let's just double check that I can even hear any. It's interesting, the attenuator for frequency actually isn't uh, doing anything. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do the disting. Thanks, G5. Good, I don't have to pull out my uh, little app for that. Thanks. G5. All right. Uh, it's probably... Ah, this is the actual disting tuner. Okay, let's try that. Uh, and I think it's X that's in or something like that, isn't it? Right, so it's a, I think a C, like a minor. I honestly don't think, which is really interesting, that the frequency attenuverter is actually doing anything. Maybe it needs, I think it says that it needs a dummy cable into volt per octave before it will do anything. That might make sense, actually. So, let's listen to it again and see if, see if the attenuverter is really doing anything. Damping the maximum, second dummy cable into volt per octave, triggered along route. Frequency attenuverter is doing nothing. I wonder if I've got a this this particular nano rings I got um, second hand quite a while ago. So yeah, uh, yes, that's right because it duplicates it, doesn't it? So do, 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 X out and then A. Oh well, there we go. No. It, well, it's definitely a pure tone because usually when I use Disting's uh, tuning, it just like is flickering constantly. But so D minus C minus. I just wish that I could get the fine tuning going here. D minus C minus. I don't understand why the frequency attenuator is doing absolutely nothing. Not any of these other attenuators got. But yeah, I was saying that this I got this second hand, or well, third hand, this particular nano ring. It's the other one I got built for me. So maybe just to be sure, let's try tuning the other one. Because maybe I got a dud. Entirely possible. Just need a longer cable to patch that. So, ah, so this will be coming out. And these two go into strum and dummy cable volt per octave, and we had position not max, dampening all the way up, brightness and shape somewhere around 10 o'clock-ish. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. I totally have a dud. This frequency not, or uh, attenuator is 100% not working. Well, that sucks, <laughs> but okay, let's tune this one. <laughs> so we're at B plus right now, let's, there's a C plus, and come on. Basically there, this thing's flickering, that's what you want to see, all right. That's approximately a C, as close as I'm going to get anyway. Man, that is very disappointing that this other one has a busted attenuator. I guess I better learn to solder. Someday that'll probably save me. <laughs> yep, that's totally busted. All right, so the closest I'm going to get is this is a... 
come on, C ish. So if I trigger these both, uh, let's just melt this and see if they sound approximately the same. Hopefully, they're not at least not too far off that it's terrible. Uh, okay, let's strum both of them at the same time. Yeah, I'm admittedly I am not. I have zero soldering skills, but I think I'm gonna have to learn, especially based off this, where, uh, where uh, the first module I've ever had that's actually been busted. It's no wonder it was so cheap. <laughs> I didn't even think to test that now because because I don't know. <laughs> All right, both together, so we hear both outputs at the same time. It's definitely not 100% in tune. Maybe we can make this a little better. Turn the volume up a bit on these. It's not bad, there's still a bit of warble to it, but that's close enough. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Cool. Yeah, so, uh, so again, for reference, what you have to do to tune this thing, shape it or uh, shape or structure and brightness at about 10 o'clock. You don't have to max out dampening. It's just nice because it gives you a very, very long droning note. Green uh, pol uh, polyphony, green mode position, not at one of the two extremes. And see, court, you're done <laughs> until it falls out of tune again sometime. While I'm at it, I might as well tune Tell Harmonic because I'm here. Yeah, supposedly it is in tune with all the modes now. I mean, like, that's got to be taken with a grain of salt because um, I think the green mode is the only one where you can really get a tone that's, that's close to a pure sign without, you know, a whole bunch of different extra harmonics that can make it sound... Um, not the same, but I should be able to change these both into the other modes, and we should at least get the same sound out of both of them. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. So, quickly, since we've got this all nice, let's just swap one of these. Oh no, that's the that's definitely going to be my reference. You. Go and tell him, Mike. Bell harmonic is another one of those ones you more so have to do by ear again. If I can get a better ear sound out of this, I can't remember if the P or the H out is better. I don't think it's the H out. Too many harmonics, it's the P out. <laughs> and if I routed that through the uh, the dissing, and if you can see, that's what it sort of ends up being when you can't get a pure tone. Uh, it's just like rapidly vibrating between a million notes. <laughs> but I mean, this sounds... Close. Close enough. That is one of the charms of uh, of modular, I think, too, and and really great in ambient modular too, because like if you're doing if you're doing things like sending stuff through a lo-fi junkie, you're kind of like willingly putting things a little bit out of tune to give it that warbly sound anyway. So having your oscillators not perfectly in tune with each other can actually uh, be a good effect as long as it's not too drastically out of tune. And I think I can do the same with plats while I'm here. Could all use a good tuning. Um, I think the easiest way to do this might be in chord mode because the auxiliary output in chord mode just sends the root note. So the harmonics won't do anything. That's pretty good. That's a pretty solid tone. Yeah, Disting's giving me an, an A minus right now, so. C minus. Plus. 
Dios Now look at that. Who would have thought that it'd be tuned properly when frequency is at the 12 o'clock position? <laughs> yeah, I probably should have guessed that. Anyway. So yeah, that's how you tune rings. I'll, uh, let me quickly grab it, actually. I'll post it in the chat. One sec. I gotta get another keyboard for doing this. My keyboard is, uh, is way over here. <laughs> There is the link uh, that I'm working off of for the rings tuning thing. And it has an alternative method by another amazing uh, ambient artist, uh, Arbeni, uh, which I have not tried, but this first one works pretty well. So now we were going to do some morphogene stuff. Ha, yes. Now to get a rings, yes. It's, I mean, I think I've said this in other streams, but it, 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 it is the stereotypical ambient sound, but I, I don't care about it being stereotypical. It also sounds amazing, so, you know. <laughs> and being that it's a resonator, you can also get some very interesting sounds out of it running other sounds through it. Um, maybe we will try is that Since we've got two rings that are in tune, maybe we will try that with the Morphogene. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Mostly because... As you can probably see up here, I need longer cables because these ones just barely fit from one end to the other. I'm, I'll probably be using some more of this, um, this Octolink that I've got here that I haven't really been using yet uh, to let... Uh, basically the Octolink is a thing that IntelliJ put together that uh, lets you use like a Cat6 cable, like an, um, like an internet cable. You plug it in here, you plug it in on the top, and it takes eight patch points and moves them up there. Um, it's unbuffered, so you need to buffer it first if you're going to be sending audio through, uh, meaning like uh, you need to, um, if you put it into a buffered mult, it'll apply some actual power to it that helps the signal not die out when it's being transmitted. Otherwise, you'll end up with uh, your, your sound coming in here might be a C, but by the time it gets over here and travels through the cable, it might be, you know, like a C flat or something like that. So, Morphogene. Uh, I have the manual pulled up because we're going to do this really from scratch. I, if you were on one of the last streams, you would have heard my, my story of, of the first time I encountered Morphogene, which was right at the beginning of my modular career. I bought way too many modules all at once, one of which was Morphogene, as is typical for... Um, make noise modules, not exactly the most user-friendly thing right out of the box, especially if you have no idea how modular works yet. And so it lasted a few weeks before I was like just done with it, had no idea how to work it, couldn't make it do anything I wanted it to, and then sold it. And I wish I hadn't, but you know, what can you do? So I loaded this up with a, uh, a reel, which is essentially like a a recording uh, and these reels that uh, this is a reel that make noise themselves produced um, based off something I don't remember exactly what but it also has splice points in it which essentially gives you like um, different sounds so if I turn that on we can listen uh, so this is morphogene now creepy I can change the organize. I remember this much, and it will go to different things. That light, splice light changes to show you which it's playing. Well, at least I picked a really cool sounding uh, sample here. The other thing that's important to note is this very speed thing, which controls like how fast the playback is. So uh, if we do something like the first splice, and slow it way down or go in reverse. And when it's green on the right hand side, uh, that's when you are fully, you are in tune with the original sample. I'll find that point. What is it? Right, so Morphogene is all about 
samples, either samples that you record into it or uh, samples that you uh, just drop on the SD card and mangling the hell out of them in different ways. So let's see what we should start with here. Uh, oh yes, typically with this you're supposed to start with an auto-leveling thing which sets uh, sets Morphogene up so when it listens through your left and right up here. Um, adjust this a little bit so you can see. Just a minute. My picture's in the way. There we go. Uh, yeah, the auto-level adjusts the left and right so that uh, it's listening at an appropriate level so that you're not getting clipping or it's not too quiet and things like that. But in this case, at least for now, we're not going to record anything into it, so we'll leave that totally alone. Um, all right. We don't need to do any synchronization of recordings or anything like that. Uh, da, 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 da. What else have we got in here that sounds interesting? Okay, so, and yeah, like I said, this is pre-spliced. Usually you have to go in and set, like, splice points yourself by hitting this button or triggering it from here, but we're, we're not going to do that. So, uh, you select the splice by the organized thing, which we've already been doing. Now, i got to remember what slide and gene size. So, gene size and slide determine how much and which portion of the splice are paying back. If the gene size is full counterclockwise, the entire splice plays and loops, which is exactly what it is doing right now. As we turn it up, the portion of the splice you hear playing back is gradually getting smaller. So this is like the granular side of things. So let's turn this quite far up and see what happens when it plays again. Oh, jeez. Huh. It helps if I don't turn the attenuator. It helps if I turn the actual control, you know. Oh, that's okay. Now, this makes more sense. So now we're getting down to tiny little splices. And so if we move the slide control, or you can get into the really weird granular stuff. Ooh. Fancy terrible sounding in some places. Let's put some reverb on this because, as I've said before, reverb always makes everything sound better. Uh, what are we on? Channel 7? Unmute the... So now we can we can essentially slide through slices of this particular audio. Let's switch to a different. Now the other important control. I, I'm remembering things from however many years ago it was when I last looked at this module. The other really important control with all of this is morph, because morph sort of determines the overlap of each gene or each slice that you're doing. Right now, morph is all the way left, which means like each each slice is playing completely independently. Uh, you can hear that, right? There's, a, there's an obvious gap between each slice. But as you turn up morph, it starts making them overlap. get into ambient territory <laughs> and I believe once you turn it far enough it starts injecting random genes that are octave pitched you heard one there yeah Already cooler sounds than I ever made. 
Yes, a bit like texture in clouds. Exactly, exactly. Except for, unfortunately, it doesn't control like where you, um, clouds texture controls the like the attack and decay of like the envelope of the grain or something like that. And I don't believe that morph actively does that. You don't. I think that clouds one direction it's a it's a like it's an exponential curve in one direction. It's a linear curve or something like that. But anyway, yes, generally same idea. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, sorry, this sounds so cool. We, yeah, let's leave, let's just leave the pitch alone. We'll put some modulation in here soon because I think, I think that honestly was where I missed out on when I first started using this because of course I didn't know a huge amount about, about um, modular, so I also didn't realize that like, you know, 90% of modular is modulation. <laughs> so that will make things sound really cool. Um, what else is there to note that's important here? Um, we already talked about the overlap and the additional stuff. We're not going to do any recording on this just yet. So, hmm. Right, and there's all this like time stretching and compression stuff, but we'll leave that alone for now. So let's let's put some modulation in here. I'm especially curious to put some modulation into organize. So organize will pick a new sound. Uh, and if we, if we actually if we modulate organize and we modulate slide, then we're gonna pick a new sound and we're gonna randomly move around or you know however whatever we send into it. We're gonna move around inside of that sound and then maybe move to another sound later on. So unplug some things Let's see what we can do oh, come out here. okay so modulation what shall we use well first let's use marbles and yet let's, let's use its random um, Let's use its random smooth CV because a smooth CV would be really good for slides so that we're not jumping around between things we should be like gradually transitioning from one part to the next and let's let's set slide all the way left and let's do an all the way positive attenuator so that we're just gonna hopefully that we should just slide through the whole thing uh, randomly let's see what he sounds like Okay. Hmm, we might actually have to let's leave this halfway because I forgot that the uh, continuous uh, Y out from um, marbles can let's see can go negative. Um, so if you put it all the way, put slide all the way left, whenever it's negative, it's just going to sit there and do nothing, which is not really helpful. Uh, what do you mean, does it move with those exact settings? Or, I guess, were you talking about what I just said about, yeah, slide all the way to the left. It will move, but only when it's positive, so that wasn't the greatest choice. But let's also do, uh, organize. Um, uh, so organize doesn't necessarily need to be a smooth value. So we could use the other half of marbles here, why not? Uh, we'll set the steps, if you saw one of my previous um, streams you saw about that, we're going to set the steps to uh, to unquantize but not um, gliding, because we don't really care about the glide in this case. Um, unlock it, oh, must have been a leftover from the last time I did this. For now we'll set this in here. Drop this into organize and see what this does. <laughs> that might be a little too random. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, that feels a little bit too random. 
maybe an LFO instead. I'm gonna steal some from uh, my previous experiments with QPass. Take a Tetrapad LFO. Oh, by the way, if you haven't been paying attention, um, there is a live stream that is going on, I believe it's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific time, um, that the IntelliJuggle people are doing, uh, and it's a live stream about the expander for the Tetrapad. The, I thought it was pronounced the Tete, but it's pronounced the Tet, apparently. Um, you should check that out because I think I'm really I'm definitely going to get it as soon as it's out, uh, and it would be a great expansion to this right now because I could sequence a bunch of voltages and send those voltages into uh, uh, organizers or something like that very very easily. Um, I could do that with stages too, but it requires a few more um, cables and all that sort of stuff. So, all right, let's try with a slow LFO. I'm going to play with gene size in the meantime here. Oh, that's actually nicer with a lower gene size. <laughs> it's funny that I think a lot, I don't think that, uh, ah, is that, yeah, that's the link. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, they originally had it at 11 a.m., which I was going to be able to make, but the 2 p.m. one I'm not going to be able to make, which sucks. I'll have to watch it after the fact, but... Uh, yeah, this sounds better with a lower gene size, I think. But I think that there's one or two splices in this reel that are not in the same key, and it sounds sort of weird when it ends up landing on them. <laughs> Morph all the way up, just because I'm curious we didn't quite have it then. <laughs> yes, you're kind of right, it is like a tuning orchestra. <laughs> So maybe what I will do is run that change to organize through an attenuverter and we'll see if that helps us to maybe not hit those samples. I don't know where they are in the reel, but set this to, uh, yeah, Unipolar, sure. Now it's not going to shift too far. Interesting. I'm curious about... Putting it in reverse. sounds creepy in spots sometimes like horror movie sort of dissonant oh my god what is that where did that come from <laughs> oh happy accidents i love it <laughs> okay i guess i'm making a horror soundtrack because yeah <laughs> Cool. All right. What else could we do here? Uh, I don't want to give it new splice settings. Don't want to re-record anything yet. What does shift do? I don't know. Let's look. Holy, I've forgotten how complicated this, uh, this manual is for this thing. It's no wonder I had no idea what I was doing when I started. <laughs> oh, I think I hit the end of the manual. That's 
Where is shift? What do you do? Functions, force manipulation. Fun scales. Wow, this is really creeping me out. I love it. <laughs> yeah, reverse flute horror theme, exactly. <laughs> It's interesting. It's really interesting because it did not sound like that at all when it was run forward for some reason, at least to me. Huh. Okay, I don't know what shift does. So, what else could we do with this? I'm curious about running this through Rainmaker. So I'm going to do that. Oh, there's that weird sound again. I don't know where it comes from. Let's, uh... Give this attenuator a little bit more room to breathe and see where that ends up going. Meantime, I'll patch up Rainmaker. Do any of you color coordinate your uh, your uh, patch cables? I totally wish that I had the patience to do so, but I just I always grab what's there. But some people have these beautiful videos where it's all like, you know, all the sound is one color and all the CVs are another color. And <laughs> I'm always jealous. Okay, we'll take out QPass for now. Um, God, that sound is cool. Alright. Pull this out for a moment. Let's put it in to Rainmaker. Left is green in this case. Let's go eliminate the channel. Um, coming through. It has some reverb on it. Really enough reverb send, but. And what am I missing here? All the sends are up. Touch this across properly. Hmm. I'm not getting any sound. Only color equals length for you. Yeah, fair. I mean, I've, I know I've got some... some of the uh, stack cables, right? These tip-top ones, which are handy on occasion. The, the only, and that's the only form of color coordination I have. <laughs> okay, what have I done here? Oh, I was on the wet mix. That makes sense, and there is nothing in this right now. So, the question is, should I try out Rainmaker's bizarre, bizarre presets? on top of this bizarre, bizarre sound and see what we get, or should I make something? Random button. Okay, even better. <laughs> okay, let's... Uh, let's do that. Um, trigger is randomized. Uh, all right. Uh, wait, I have to set something else to make it actually randomize everything, don't I? Uh, where is it again? It's the trigger will only randomize things that already exist. There's this, this, yes. Randomize all. I'm gonna blow out someone's eardrums with that. That's a lot of comb filter. <laughs> but you know what? Good call on the random because. <laughs> Yeah, that's really, 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 really creepy. Hmm. 
Actually, I don't even think... Oh yeah, the comb filter wasn't even actually on for that, it's just delays. <laughs> what did it do? Uh, let's see. So a bunch of different levels and random muting and a bunch of balance to the left. Filters with a lot of uh, resonance, that's probably what the sound is. It's really random bit shifting. <laughs> this is that this is that whole too much randomness can sometimes be good and sometimes be bad and sometimes be whatever the hell this is. <laughs> Let's try another one. Uh, back to edit mode. Okay. Sounds like electronic frogs. What about? Weird. What's it doing with this? Yes, using the tit to send lots of random to create presets with uh, plats or things like that. I completely agree because plats can be a pain to uh, to if you want, especially if you want to do stuff like make a chord progression on it in chord mode or whatever else. It would also be very great for tail harmonic. I think to I've said in previous streams that I tend to only use tail yeah, tail harmonic in the analog shift register mode because it's kind of easy to use in comparison to, to trying to uh, to uh, sequence a, a set of chords. But I think being able to just choose a choose a bunch of voltages like that might make it a little easier, especially it will remain to be seen how easy it is to set the voltages. Intent. I hope that you don't have to set it just by like dragging your finger on the pad. I hope that you can like dial it in because I've tried doing that with stages before and it's been to some degree successful, but I mean, you only have this much throw on a on a fader to be able to choose a very precise voltage and it doesn't, it's not easy. <laughs> All right, one more random try here and then we'll see where we go from there. Getting some weirdness out of this. Why does it keep stopping? Good, better. I'm curious about clocking this. I don't think I ever tried that, and I don't really know what it does, so we're going to find out. Let's clock it off marbles. I think I remember reading something in the manual that it says that this thing goes blue and that means it's in time stretch mode or something like that, but I have not played with it at all, although having had an Octatrack in the past, I know how cool the time stretching can be. Um, I don't know if it's doing anything. What about if we trigger it? Right, this is just going to trigger when a gene plays, which makes sense, which totally makes sense. Not really handy in this case, I don't think. What if we play with very speed? I am going to... Try uh, something random out of Pam's new workout. Don't bother clocking it because whatever. We're not going to sync to our vector sequencer today, I don't think. 
get some decent modifier. It's not too big. Let's put this in very speed. Maybe we'll have it go a little bit positive so it slows down a bit. I guess it must uh, interpolate between the value, like, because I'm not, I'm sending discrete random values. This isn't a, um, uh, it's very stepped, but I guess Morphogene is truly tape-like and is interpolating between those values, so it makes it weird. About all the way up. <laughs> Alright, no. I wonder if it ha I know that there's a bunch, or if I recall, there's a bunch of modes that you can set on Morphogene uh, via like a text file that's on the SD card to, to switch it into different modes. It would be interesting to see if there's one that makes it so it doesn't interpolate between because I would wonder about being able to uh, use a CV into various speed to quickly switch between um, original speed reversed and original speed to be able to just like randomly send in some reverse stuff whenever you want to. This is already, uh, like I said, I'm already making way more progress with Morphogene than I ever have in the past when I used it. I want to try one more Rainmaker preset because I'm curious. I want this one. I want this one. Is it not showing any taps being enabled? Weird, because I loaded a preset that was supposed to have taps enabled. And none of them are. Okay, that's cool. That gives it a lo-fi sound. It's <laughs> still very much horror music. This is the creepiest thing I've ever made. <laughs> Problem is, going from here, I'm like, once you have something that's scary, what do you even do with it? <laughs> there's no... <laughs> there's nothing. All right, let's let's try Morphogene's whole recording thing. Let's see if I can figure that out. So, I'm going to do that. I'll pull the slide and organize out for now. And let's just have... Rainmaker on fully dry. I'll make this go in forward in. <laughs> so sensitive to get that green light. You can do it. Do it. No, oh, come on. Okay. All right. What should we put into this? Let's see. How about since we tuned rings, let's just put some random rings pattern into it. We already had stuff uh, set up from last time that we'll just borrow. Too many cables everywhere. Screen. Octave. And. I guess we could go odds to the left and evens to the right, because why not? It's like rings, is he? I don't, I haven't quite understood that, the odd versus even thing. It's like the odd harmonics go out on one channel and the even harmonics go out on another or something like that. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. 
that sounds reasonable. I'm good with that. Maybe a little less bright. Yeah, it's not really stereo, so to speak. I just, I think, I get the feeling that the odd and even thing is more relevant if you're using it as a resonator and sending your own sounds into it rather than um, just strumming it like I am oftentimes doing. Right, but one thing I forgot to mention, this this little control that I move, this is the sound on sound thing, which controls how much you hear of the sound that's being piped into Morphogene versus what it has recorded. So, um, I just gotta quickly check and see how do you make a new splice, because I really don't want to overwrite that one. I mean, I could re-download it, but there is a way to make a new splice. Uh, or not a new splice, a new reel. If I hold, splice, and press record, it goes into real mode. Hold the organized control and see the input to use to select the reel. Okay. Oh, I see that that light's changing. Okay, so like, this maybe is a new reel? Uh, it flashes pink and white and has no audio preview. Exit reel mode with this reel selected to create a new reel. So I assume I hit like record or like... Space? Or I exit. Shift? Uh oh, it doesn't say. Hmm. Oh, splice and pressing record. Yeah, I don't know actually. <laughs> oh, maybe I just have to do the same thing. Oh, yep. Duh, should have guessed. Alright, so now we should have a brand new reel here. Yeah, because nothing's playing, so that's good. So just for sake of argument, let's just record a little bit of this and see. Now, of course, because all the, uh, those are all turned up, but... Okay, well, we captured something. this already. <laughs> Let's put that modulation that I had somewhere, wherever it was, back in again. The slide especially. Now if we do half and half so we get the sound on sound plus this interestingly recorded thing. I just noticed. Come on. There we go. Oh, come on. Give me a green light. There. I want quite as many of those. That's actually giving it a nice sort of bed of sound. I like that. Like on its own. But. Add in a bit of sparkliness. Hmm. Now I know the other trick that you can do with this is trigger recording. Um, 
which I think overwrites the reel each time. Which could be interesting to have this record different parts of the uh, of the whole sequence that we're playing here. Actually, first, real quick, I will be right back. Okay, sorry about that. I am back. Alright, so Ken is suggesting do rings to Rainmaker and blend more for, uh, the record from rings into a two voice patch. Hmm, okay. So, alright, let's start. If we put Morphogene straight back in so that we can do Rainmaker. Hopefully I have long enough cables to do this. I think I will. Uh, uh, uh. That's bizarre. I left and that was enough to get this to fall out of that green zone. <laughs> okay. So you were saying that we'll do rings. Instead of going into morphogene, rings will go into rainmaker. And 
out of Rainmaker and go into Morphogene. Okay, cables fit. Look at that. Bit of a stretch, but. Okay, so. Let's just go back to no morphogene for the moment. Definitely this isn't going to be the patch for it. But. That's actually kind of cool. It's, it's called wah verb. You know, while we're at it, I was thinking maybe we blend uh, the last stream in here a bit and let's maybe put some chance or maybe a modulation uh, on this uh, on this sequence we got running just to keep it changing a little bit. Let's yeah, let's do let's do modulation. Let's modulate. Sure, let's modulate the octaves to start. Uh, yeah, we had we had this from the last stream set up at a length of six and alternating directions. So down one, we'll go up one, we'll go down one. I like it when it goes up one, actually. It's nicer when it comes down an octave. Then let's add... Let's add a chance to... skip forward. Hmm, no. That sort, of, that sort of breaks up the... Uh, breaks up the pattern too much. What else could we do? We can randomly go up a fifth. Sure, let's just add a few let's just add a few of these random chances to go up a fifth. Just to keep things interesting here. Maybe not quite that close, and maybe put 16 steps in this pattern, so maybe here in 10? I don't know. No worries, Ken. I appreciate uh, you all uh, sticking with me, by the way. It's nice. Uh, it's nice to have people around to talk to while I while I uh, do this. Um, <laughs> my first couple streams are pretty lonely, so this is nice. As I, I think I've said in my other uh, previously too, it's I don't have very many people in this area who are into modular stuff, so it's good to have other people to talk with about all this coolness. All right, so we got a little more variety to this now. So, let's see about doing this triggered recording thing. I think what I'll do to start is just set it up to do a triggered record and keep it on just the recorded sound because I, I want to understand what it does. I think that it overwrites the reel, but I can't be bothered to go through the manual right now to find it. So, what we really need is a random trigger that happens at completely random times. So, that sounds like Pam's new workout. <laughs> so, let's do that. Um, we'll make this first output gate, because that would be a good random trigger. We'll tell it to randomly skip it. I don't know, a good 75% of the time. And... Set the modifier to something... much slower, I think. Maybe, maybe not just yet. Not until we hear the effect of this. So, 
I'm going to switch to serial sound here. I'm going to trigger recording. Let's see what this does. Oh, I think it's a toggle switch. That's too bad. I was hoping that the record, the record setting would be um, record while high, stop recording while off. That's, I bet you that's one of those settings that you can switch around with. Uh, yeah. This isn't going to be too useful in that case because you really need... Uh, it's probably going to be recording for a very long period of time. I guess if I turn up the modifier and have it go more often, it'll start recording more. Even then, I don't think it is. Let's see. All right, I do have to look at the manual, sadly. Let's see what it says. At the very least, I should probably delete the reel. So that we, so if I go into reel mode. Reel mode, no, I'm not. Splice. Record, right? Yeah, there. This was the reel that I was in, and then I can delete the reel by holding shift and pressing record. Okay. Cool. So we'll do a new reel. Just need to start. I guess this. Yeah, we still got sound coming in, so all right. Definitely must be something I'm missing. Let's try this again. Oh, right. This is something I remember messing me up time and time again when I was using the Morphogene previously. Oh. Sorry, just a second. <laughs> My computer is running out of disk space because I didn't clean up the recording from last time. <laughs> Whoops. One minute. Saved. Excellent. <laughs> so, uh, right, so the thing that I was talking about is that Morphogene, by default, records, like it records its own output. It doesn't record what's coming in up here. It records the results of what's gone through. So if I'm in the setup where I, have, where I am right now, where sound on sound is entirely on um, the recording side, the reel doesn't have anything to play, so it doesn't have anything to record, so you just get silence. I believe that there is some sort of way to get around that, but I think it's one of the uh, settings that you uh, do in the SD card again, which I will have to look at later. So I don't know that this is going to do what I wanted it to, but let's, let's get something recorded into there. <laughs> oh, I am very sorry. I will be back one more time.
All right. Uh, I am very sorry, everyone, but I, I'm going to have to cut this stream a little short today. Uh, I've just got some personal stuff going on that I have to deal with, unfortunately. You know how it is sometimes. Uh, but hopefully this was uh, interesting, useful. Um, I have another stream tomorrow, same time, uh, where I will probably explore the morphogene a little bit further. Hopefully I will get a chance to do a little bit more of reading of the manual and maybe we can get this whole uh, dynamic recording thing going again. I'll leave things patched as they are so we can sort of uh, go from where we left off. So again, thanks very much everyone for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, Ken, I appreciate you. Uh, you've, you've, you've been the most consistent person coming by. It's really great to see. Jajora, it's good to see you. Uh, like I said, I recognize you from YouTube, so it's good to see. And yeah, so hopefully I will see some of you uh, tomorrow. And if not, uh, since I believe everyone who's been in chat is, is EU base, Saturday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, um, which I believe is 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 p.m. Uh, UTC. I will be streaming again. So uh, take care, everyone. Uh, have a good night. <laughs>